Okie dokie, everyone. Can I start off by saying either a good morning or good afternoon or a good evening, depending on where you are around the world. And thank you for joining me tonight on my latest episode of how I got to grips with trading. Presented by myself, of course, which is uh, James Triscothic, and I'm the head of investment research here at Stratton Markets. Now, tonight's episode is called How I Got to Know About Moving Averages. Before we get on to a little brief introduction on myself and, uh, of course, tonight's agenda, bear in mind, I am discussing online trading and CFD trading. And like with all types of investments, it does indeed carry a great deal of risk. So I do suggest you do your own research and do your own due diligence and know the risks at hand before entering any trade. With that out the way, this black and white, rather stylish picture, if I say so myself. Now, of course, I'm joking. Wrinkly picture, shall I say, is myself. Like I said, my name is James Triscothic, and I'm the head of investment research here at Stratton Markets. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I have over 20 years experience in the financial service industry. I actually started off at the age of 18. I am now the prime age of 40, soon to be 41. Um, yeah, I started off actually as a mortgage broker uh, from 18. And then I went to become an independent, uh, independent financial advisor, obviously in the UK, as you can tell, I'm a Brit. I specialized in commercial mortgages. Then I moved into pensions and alternative investments. And it was during the time of when I was doing pensions is that I sort of realized or come to the conclusion that we were facing uh, pretty much a pension crisis. So that for us, individuals to try and obviously have or make enough income or additional income for us to look to retire on, we would have to look at alternative sources. And this is how I got involved in trading all that time ago. I've actually been in the industry, trading industry for 14 years. Okay. Um, I have indeed trade myself. I trade for a prop company in portfolio management. And like I say, I do education as part of my role as head of investment research. I'm indeed a published writer, and I've been published in several leading industry publications, including the likes of the Financial Times Advisor, uh, City AM, Market Watch, which is the Wall Street Journal, The Street, and a good number of well-known industry uh, publications. I'm an avid market commentator. I'm <laughs> extremely passionate about this marketplace. And I'm a well-known public speaker. And I've spoken at a number of industry events around the world, including the likes of Singapore, um, Dubai, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi, South Africa, Joburg, Johannesburg, Joburg, Pretoria, Cape Town, London, obviously, Berlin. Um, just to name a few off the top of my head. But his way, I am no like diminishing wallflower, I'm quite confident when I come to speaking. Now, <clears throat> tonight's agenda, like I said, we're talking about how I got to understand moving averages. So tonight we'll talk, first of all, a little bit, especially for those uh, individuals who are new to this trading uh, arena. Um, I'm out of interest, just to sort of uh, maybe a show of hands of individuals who are new, just put, it, put your hand up if you are new to this industry. Um, but anyway, well, first of all, we'll talk about what is technical analysis, because moving averages is technical indicators. So to understand what moving average is, you have to understand a little bit what technical analysis is. Then we'll discuss example of technical indicators. Like I say, the moving average is a technical indicator. Then we we'll talk about simple moving averages, what they are. Then we'll discuss the moving average crossover. Then we'll discuss exponential moving average versus simple moving average. And then we'll talk about future educational events, which just to shake it up a little bit, I'm gonna try something new at that point. And then of course my usual question and answer session at the end. So, 
what is technical analysis? Technical analysis is a method of trying to establish potential, <coughs> excuse me, potential future directions of an asset by studying past price data and volume. The theory behind technical analysis is that previous trading activity can potentially give you a better indication of what direction an asset may go. The basic concept was developed from the Dow theory, which was written by the writing, or came or created, shall I say, by the writings by an individual by the name of Charles Dow, very original. The Dow theory believes the price movement of an asset is not actually random, but actually follows patterns and repeating trends. So those traders out there <clears throat> who use technical analysis, they tend to use what's known as technical indicators. And technical indicators are calculations that take into account price, volume, demand of an asset over a set period of time. Now, there's many examples, hundreds of different technical analysis, uh, technical indicators out there. Here's a few examples. Uh, we have the likes of the relative strength index, we see an oscillator. We have stochastics, we have the MACD, moving average converge divergence, again, which is an oscillator. We have Bollinger Bands, we have trend lines, and we have simple moving averages. And this is what we're talking about today. And of course, exponential moving averages, which is again, what I will talk about today. So a simple moving average, a simple moving average, or simply known as uh, SMA, abbreviated, is calculated by adding up the recent closing price of an asset and then dividing it by a certain period of time. So, for example, if you chose a moving average of 10, we set the parameters of 10, a moving average will calculate the closing price of an asset over, say, 10 days, if you were using a daily chart, so you set it to 10, so 10 days, and then divide it by 10. Okay, now not to worry, you don't obviously have to do this mathematical calculations yourself. Trading is not about being a mathematical genius. Trading is about having a number of things. So the actual indicators itself, <clears throat> excuse me, will calculate it for you. Now, the SMA is often used to identify a trend and at the same time is used to spot potential support and resistance levels. So what does that mean, James? Well, let me give you an example. Okay, so this is the euro dollar on a daily. And we have our moving average, simple moving average of 10. See 10, close 10. Okay, and it's the blue line. So the theory is, I get my little laser pointer. The theory is, if the asset is trading below the simple moving average, it's on a downtrend. And if it's trading above the simple moving average, then it's on an uptrend. The theory then goes on to say that if it's below the simple moving average, then the simple moving average can act as a potential resistance, i.e. like a ceiling where the asset will come hit and the market will start to sell off. If the asset is trading above the simple moving average, so it's on an uptrend, then the SMA becomes a support, i.e. a level where the market may drop to and the market will start buying in again. So let's have a quick look at this example, a couple of examples we have here. So we have our euro dollar on a daily. Above the simple moving average, moving higher on an uptrend. Comes down to test it, 
it does indeed act as support and the market <clears throat> starts to buy in, pushing the asset higher. It falls below finally the SMA, so it then goes on a downtrend, acting this time as a resistance. This point is it's sort of range trading, it's acting a bit of both. It's just roughly breaks above it slightly, but as you can see, it's range trading, the market is buying in from the simple moving average. Finally, breaks below it, and again, it does indeed act as a resistance because as it breaks below, the market tries to come back up, but it acts a resistance and the market sells, pushing it further downwards. Breaks above it, goes on an uptrend. Breaks below it on a downtrend, simple moving A, a simple moving average, then becomes resistance where the market sells off, breaks above it, uptrend, breaks below it, downtrend, breaks above it, a slight uptrend, as you can see, the market buys in. Let's do another example. This is the euro dollar this time on a 30 minute chart. Breaks above it, uptrend, stays above it. A simple moving average at this point acts as a support where the market buys in. Breaks above it, uptrend. Again, the market acts, or the simple moving average acts as a support as the market buys in. Breaks below it, downtrend. It continues this downtrend, and this time as it continues this downtrend, the simple moving average does indeed acts as the resistance as the market continues to sell off from that level. Eventually breaks above it, goes and swaps this trend, goes on an uptrend. And as we can see, the market buys around the simple moving average because it's changed its role again as a support. Let's do another example. This is gold on a daily. Breaks below the simple moving average, so it indicates a downtrend. As you can see, as it is on indeed on a downtrend, the simple moving average does indeed act as a resistance. And every time gold tries to come above it, the market keeps selling off from the simple moving average. Eventually tries to break, doesn't hold for too long, holds slightly, breaks below it. But then this time, again, this is where it's dangerous because the N goes on a ranging market. So it's ranging. So the simple MA changes its role, A as a resistance, then as a support then as a resistance, then as a support, until we have a clean break, breaks way above a simple moving average and does indeed go on a slight uptrend. Let's change the time zone, let's do it 30 minutes because you obviously can use it at different time frames. <laughs> so it's 30 minutes, breaks below the simple moving average, indicating the market is on a downtrend, acts as a resistance with the market sells from, Eventually breaks above it slightly and it does indeed go on an uptrend and simple moving average here and here acts as a support where the market buys in again. Now, that's just a simple moving average. Now there is another method where you can use a simple moving average, but this time you use two simple moving averages. Okay. And this technique is called the moving average crossover. Now, the moving average crossover, or the theory behind the moving average crossover, is that traders who use this, they believe that the crossover can help identify if a trend is about to change, i.e. if the direction of an asset is about to change. And this gives the trader the potential opportunity of getting prepared and getting ready to enter into the market. Now, the crossover occurs when a smaller moving average crosses over a larger moving average. What does that mean, James? Well, let me explain it. Here's an example. This is the British pound US dollar on a daily. Now, the crossover works like this. 
first of all, we have a simple moving average, a smaller simple moving average, just say 10. So the SMA is taking the closing price of an asset over 10 days and divided it by 10 to do its calculation. Then you set another parameter <clears throat> for another moving average. This time you set the parameters at 20. So this time it takes the closing price of an asset over 20 days and divide it by 20. So the 10 is the smaller and the 20 is the larger. So if this graphical represent, rep, rep, let's start again. This gra graphical represents, rep, I can't say it. This graphical example, there we go, this, there we go. Got tongue tied there. This graphic example here, the blue line is the smaller and the larger line or the larger SMA is, let's call it mustard color. So the theory, remember, when the blue crosses below or the smaller crosses below the larger, indicates the market's changing direction going downwards. If the blue crosses above the larger, so blue in this case crosses the mustard, indicates the market's changing direction and going on an uptrend. So let's look at some example. Blue below the mustard, downtrend. This is why I like to illustrate, okay, it doesn't, like all indicators, they're not always 100% uh, foolproof. As we can see here, okay, this is a prime example of this. The smaller crosses above the larger, so the blue crosses above the mustard, indicating that the market is likely to, is potentially changing, but it gives us a false signal because obviously something else has happened. And at this point, it's false. And it then moves below it again, indicating downtrend, and indeed the market, this time does give us a clear indication the market is on a downtrend. Remains below the mustard, the smaller below the larger, downtrend. Breaks above, the blue breaks above the mustard, smaller breaks above the larger, uptrend, and then does indeed the market head in an uptrend direction. Again, crosses below, small downtrend, but not Clear enough signal, really sort of giving us a little bit of a false signal there. And really, yes, disaster here. Crosses above it, but obviously something else has happened in the market. False signal there. Let's do another example. This is the British pound on the US dollar. Blue above the mustard, small above the larger. Uptrend. Breaks way below the mustard indicating a downtrend and does indeed the British pound goes on a downtrend. Massive gap here as well. As soon as they widen, they're different. You can tell that the volume between the selling is increased. Range trading, not really giving us very close together, not giving us a real good indication here. Breaks above it, does indeed push it up higher and go on an uptrend. Let's do another example. This is S&P on a daily. Blue crosses above the mustard, smaller crosses past the larger. S&P does indeed head in an uptrend. Then look at this drop, bang. Blue crosses below the mustard, indicating a downtrend in the S&P 500 does indeed head in a downward direction. To the S&P 500 on a 30 minute. Blue crosses below the mustard, downtrend. Blue crosses above the mustard, uptrend. Blue crosses below the mustard, downtrend. Another example, WTI oil on a daily. As you can see this bit here, blue way above the mustard, so it's more above the larger, uptrend. Crosses below the mustard, downtrend. Crosses above the mustard, uptrend. Crosses below, downtrend. And 30 minutes, another example. WTI oil again. Again, range trading slightly down and uptrend, slight downtrend, but not dramatic. But 
passes above it quite dramatically, does go on an uptrend. Blue crosses below the mustard, does illustrate a downtrend, crosses above the mustard, uptrend, and a beautiful drop below the mustard color there. The blue goes below the mustard and does indeed go on a downtrend. So that's the simple moving average crossover. Now, let's talk about exponential moving averages. Let's do an introduction. I can say exponential, but I can't say representation. Ah, now I can say it. Wow. Anyway, let's do an exponential moving average, what these are. Because these are different from simple moving averages. Because as I mentioned, simple moving averages calculate the closing, closing price of an asset over a period of time divided by that period of time. Whereas exponential is different. The, because the danger with the SMA is basically it's just doing the average. It calculates it over a period of time, but it doesn't take into account certain sudden spikes. For example, let's say, let's take the British pound. Say on day one, it's trading at 130.86. Then it closes at 130.86. Then say day two, it closes at 130.57. Um, or on day three, it closes at 130.72. But day five, they somehow managed to find a deal with the Brexit and it skyrockets to 1.50. Okay. But then it was a false hope and it's then back down to £1.36. You see, it doesn't take into account sort of spikes like that, whereas exponential does. Because exponential tends to pay more attention to what happens or to what's happened on the closing price over the more recent trading sessions. So in case of taking the uh, just doing the average over the 10 days, it focuses on what is done maybe on day eight, day nine, and day 10 more than day one, two, three, four, and five, six. So it focuses more on more recent price movements over that period of time than the whole closing price over a period of time. Because the theory is, is this, what traders are doing more recently could have more potential or potentially hint more on where the market may be going. So the attitude of the buyers and sellers over the last couple of trading sessions are more important than over, the, say, the bigger scheme of things. So let's have a look at this. Okay, now we have a simple moving average of 10, which is blue, and a simple moving average sorry, the exponential moving average of 10, same, same 10, okay, uh, which is mustard. And as you can possibly uh, potentially see straight away, if you look at the mustard color, it follows the market a lot more closely. It's closely linked to the spikes. Where well, the blue obviously follows the indication where the market's going, but the mustard It's very, very close to where the market is going, a lot closer than the blue. And what some traders do is they use an SMA and an EMA, again, same theory, uh, sort of simple moving crossover, with the theory that if the EMA moves above the simple moving A, simple moving average uptrend, if it moves below, then the market's getting ready to sell off. Let's have a look. Above, moves above. The simple moving average, so closer to the price, market goes on an uptrend. Moves below the SMA, market does indeed go on a uh, on a downtrend. Moves above the MA, the simple moving a uh, simple moving average goes on an uptrend, and EMA follows the market closer, breaks above the simple moving average, does indeed go on an uptrend. So people uh, traders sometimes use the crossover, the EMA and SMA, same time frame, to try and get a heads up on where the direction may go. Let's do another example, SMA 10, EMA 10, so same, same range. Again, this is 30 minutes. Theory is, again, EMA will follow the market more closely, so give us a heads up before the simple moving average will. Here we go. EMA breaks above the simple moving average. Uptrend, market doesn't even uptrend. 
breaks below before the SMA does downtrend. Tends to try to break above it, but it's not a clean break. So again, false signal really. This time, however, does make a clean break below the simple moving average saying, okay, the market's getting ready to do something. And indeed, the market does indeed sell off. Breaks above it, but doesn't give us a struggle enough signal for an uptrend. So like I said, I show the pros and cons. So the question is, which is better, the SMA or the EMA? And let's do the, let's do the both. Simple moving average, EMA plus, can give you a smooth indication of direction as it does indeed cancel fake outs, as in those big surprises. Negative, it's slower, which could cause a lag in a sell and buy signal. EMA is faster and calculates, like I say, the more recent price movements. Negative, because it closes the most recent price movements, it can fall foul to fake outs and give us increased signals as well. Right, so these are up and, uh, up and coming educational events. Like I said, I'm gonna try and do something a little bit different today instead of doing the same old stuff I do. So instead of just reading it out, I'm gonna try something different. I don't know if that worked. I hope it did. Because that's something I'm trying a little bit different. Instead of just me talking, I thought I'd show a video. I hope you saw it. I don't know if you did. I hope it worked. Um, if you didn't, the educational events are indeed as follows. Um, if I can get this back to work here again. Hang on, we'll that now. There you go. Yeah, there you go. So hopefully that worked anyway. But if you didn't, it was a wasted experiment. Educational events coming up, 14th of May, how I got to understand momentum indicators. 21st of May, how I got to understand fundamental analysis. And indeed on 28th of May, how I got to understand how to trade the news. And interestingly enough, that's how I started following fundamentals and the news. Right, if you wish to speak to me, by all means, you can contact me by email. My email is james at strivermarkets.com. Alternatively, if you like, you could follow me on my massive following. Of course, I'm joking uh, on my Twitter account, which is at Jane Triscothic. Um, you can also direct message me on that. I often sort of do market updates, talk about other things coming up, other things, educational stuff I may be doing and stuff like that. And I do it in my own particular way. Before I go into questions and answers, bear in mind, I haven't even been talking about online trading and CFD trading. And like with all types of investments, it does indeed carry a great deal of risk. So I do suggest you do your research and your due diligence and know the risks at hand before entering any trade. With that out of the way, is there any questions at all? Anybody like ask me any questions <clears throat> in relation to tonight's episode or anything else in particular? No questions? Okay, did the video work? Did you see the video I played at the end? Did that work? It was the first time I tried to do it. Try and mix the different mediums in. Did it work? Everybody see it? Hear the music? I chose the music myself. Did it work? Okay. Did everybody find it tonight's topic 
slightly interesting? Do you find it useful? Or are you absolutely sick of me already? Get off, James. You're bored of hearing me or listening to you. Go home. You're so, you're so bored of listening. No? Was everybody just falling asleep? I put you all to sleep. Do you reckon I should do my own range, uh, range of like audio cassettes if people are suffer from insomnia so people can fall asleep listening to me or help them sleep listening to me? Maybe I'm, I, I think I'm, I, I'm missing out. I think that's a huge, maybe a huge investment I should look at doing. Anyway, if there's no questions or nothing anybody else like to say or um, say anything. Um, if you do wish, well, sorry, you suddenly think later, earlier on, like, hang on, do you know what? I have got a question. I wish I asked him that. I wish I told him that. Um, feel free to email me. Oh, my, uh, obviously my email address, which is james at strathamarkets.com. Any questions, feedback or anything like that. Or indeed, like I say, follow me in my huge Twitter following. Um, she's at Jay Triscothic. Um, direct message me or anything like that. Um, I hope you found it interesting. I hope, uh, don't forget, you'll get a recording of this anyway. And let me know if, you, if the video works, because I won't know until I watch the recording if it works or not. If it works or not. So that's what I want to try. I want to make it a bit more different. You know, instead of just me talking with slides, just shake it up a little, make it a bit more interesting. Okie dokie. Um, right, on that note, can I just say, depending where you are around the world, either a uh, good evening, good afternoon, or even a good morning, depending on where you are around the world. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Till next time, every single one of you trade safe.